Hello students, this is Dr. Ben. I'd like to take a few minutes to work out a problem from Chapter 5 that has to do with the topic of circular motion dynamics. So here we have a situation where uh, a small uh, mass, a ball, has been tied to the end of a string and it's being um, swung in a circle, but the circle is oriented in the vertical direction instead of the horizontal direction. And we're supposed to find some information about the tension in the string when the, the ball is at different points in the, in the orbit. So let's make a table of what we know and what we want to find about this problem. So we see that the mass of the ball is given by 1.0 kilograms. And the string has a length of 2 meters. So that will end up being the radius of the circle. That so that's two, oops, 2.0 meters. And we're told that the speed of the ball is equal to 8 meters per second at both the top and the bottom. And so this is a situation where our circular motion is uniform. And then we're asked to find the value of the tension when the ball is at the top, so I'll label that T top and then T bottom. And this capital T is standing for tension, although in this chapter we have another quantity, period, that we also use a capital T for, but that's not, not what this um, symbol is in this particular problem. All right, so let's, let's sketch the motion of the ball um, around the around the, the circle and let's first consider what happens at the top. So let's say that that's a section of the track at the top and there is the ball located directly at the top and we could just pretend that we're traveling counterclockwise. All right so I want to draw a force diagram on this um, on this sketch. So the ball experiences a tension in the string, and I'm going to call that T at the top, that points down towards the center of the circle. And there's also weight caused by gravity that also points downwards in this particular situation. And we can indicate that the direction of the centripetal acceleration is going to be towards the center of the circle. All right, so what I would want to do is to apply Newton's second law to this situation. So I'm going to say that the acceleration equals the net force divided by the mass. And now I apply that to our specific case. The acceleration is going to be called the centripetal acceleration, and that points towards the center. And then the net force is going to be the sum of the tension at the top plus the weight, because both of those vectors are in the same direction. Now I divide that by the mass. So if I do just a little bit of algebra, I get m times ac equals t at the top minus, um, sorry, plus mg. And so I just need to do one more step here to isolate the tension at the top. So that would be equal to mac plus m times g, or that's going to be m times ac, which will be equal to v squared divided by the radius and then plus the acceleration due to gravity. All right, so if we plug in the numbers that we were given, the mass was equal to one kilogram. And then we're going to multiply that by v squared. So the velocity was eight, or the speed was eight meters per second, and we square that, divide it by the radius, which is two, plus g, we'll just approximate g to be 10. So eight squared is 64, divided by two is 32, plus 10 is 42 times 1, so this will equal 42 newtons. So the tension at the top 
of the orbit that the string exerts on the ball is equal to 42 newtons. All right, so we want to do a similar thing for the bottom. So I'm going to draw a segment of the vertical circle. We'll put the ball at the bottom, and it's rotating towards the right. Now this time, when we draw the force diagram, the tension in the string, which is going to be T at the bottom, will point up, but now the weight points downwards towards the ground, and the circular acceleration, the centripetal acceleration, points towards the center, which is upwards when we consider at the bottom part of this diagram. All right, so we use the same formalism, though. Newton's second law will say that the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. So we'll have A sub C is equal to, that points upwards, so now we'll take the difference between the tension at the bottom, which points up, minus the weight that points down, and then I divide that by the mass. Do a couple steps of algebra again. M times AC equals T at the bottom minus MG. So therefore, T at the bottom equals MAC. Oh, I might have made a mistake somewhere. It looks like in that first expression, hmm, I made a mistake and there should be a minus sign. When I take that mg over to the other side, it should be minus instead of plus. So that's going to change my answer. I apologize about that, but at least we caught it. So that's going to be 8 squared, 64 divided by 2, 32 minus 10, which will be equal to 22 newtons. So I realize I made the mistake because now in the algebra for the bottom part, I can see when I take the minus mg to the other side, I get a plus sign like I thought I had for the first part of the problem. So that equals m times ac plus g. So then that will equal our 1 times 8 squared over 2 plus 10, which will be the 42 newtons that we had from before. So the tension at the bottom is 42 newtons. The tension at the top is only 22 newtons. And the reason why those numbers are different is because the force diagrams clearly show that the direction of the tension in the weight is different at the top and the bottom, and so we have to account for those directions. All right, so just to, just to bring this problem to a conclusion, I want to just um, check that I have my units. So I specified the force in newtons, the tensions, and my significant figures. I've got two that seems to be reasonable for this problem.